Today, we're going to talk about intercepts and symmetry. So we'll start out with intercepts. And before we get started, I want to show you a picture of a graph. And I want to make sure that we understand the definition of intercepts. There's two different types. There's x-intercept and there's y-intercept. So let's take a look at this picture. Okay, let's take a look at this picture. Um, the blue part is the graph and we want to talk about x and y intercept, right? So if we're talking about the x intercept, the x intercept is a place where the blue graph crosses the x axis. And there's three places where that happens, right here, right here, and right here. Now if you notice for each one of these values, the y value is always equal to zero. Each one of these points have a y value that's equal to zero. That is always going to be true for an x-intercept. Now, if we switch gears and look at um, a y-intercept, there's one place where this graph crosses the y-axis, and that's right here. And notice that the x value is equal to zero. That's always going to be true. Any value that you pick on the y-axis, the x value is always going to be equal to zero. And that's always true for a y-intercept. So this is the general idea of what an x and y-intercept is. Okay, now that we have an idea what an intercept is, we need to apply that knowledge to looking at an equation. So what's going to happen is they're going to give you an equation and they're going to ask you to find the x and the y intercept. This is the way I help my students understand this. Always think about the opposite variable, right? So if I ask you to find the x intercept, you're going to set your y equal to zero and solve for x. So if I ask you to find the x intercept, you set your y equal to zero and solve for x. And vice versa if you're talking about the y-intercept, right? So if I'm looking for the y-intercept, I'm going to set my x equal to zero and solve for y. Always the opposite variable, right? So if I ask you to find the x, you focus on setting the y equal to zero. If I ask you to find the y-intercept, you focus on setting the x equal to zero. So let's take a look at some examples. Okay, so now we're going to look at a few examples and we're going to try to find the x and y intercept of each one of these examples. So first for number one, let's go ahead and try to find the x intercept. Remember when you're finding the x intercept, you set the opposite variable equal to zero and then you solve for x. So we're going to set the y equal to zero. So in place of the y, I put a zero and I'm left with this. Now I have to solve for x. There's a couple of ways you can do that. On this one, I think I'm just going to add 9 on both sides to isolate the x squared. And then to get x by itself, I'm going to um, take the square root of both sides. Square root. Remember when you take the square root, you have to put that plus or minus there. And if you take the square root of 9, that's going to give you 3. So plus or minus 3. And then the square root of x squared is x. So the answer to this is two different answers, right? You got x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. So your intercepts, if you remember from the picture, an intercept is a point. So if you listed this as a point, it would be 3, 0, and negative 3, 0. Your y value is always going to be zero, remember? Um, another way you could have solved this, and I just want to point this out real quick. Um, you could have, and I'll do it over here on the side just really quick. So if you had this, and some of you may have done this. Uh, if you have this, you could have factored. If you're good at factoring, you could factor this. And because it's a difference of squares, you can say x plus 3 x minus 3 and then you remember you set each one equal to 0 you know do whatever gets you the correct answer like you gotta do what works for you 
So x equals 3. You get the same answer. I just wanted to show that option off to the side. Now, let's take a look at the y-intercept. So with your y-intercept, this is where you set the x equal to 0. So wherever I see x, I'm going to put 0. So y equals 0 squared minus 9. So we know 0 squared, that's just 0. Okay, right? This goes away. And you just get negative 9. So that's already solved. That was simple. So now we have y is equal to negative 9. That's one y-intercept. And again, because it's a point, we can list it like this. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one real quick. Now that we've seen one example, let's take a look at another one. So on this one, let's find our x and y intercept. So x intercept, you set the opposite variable equal to zero. So wherever I see y, I'm going to put a zero. 0 squared is equal to 4. So 0 squared is just 0. So that's basically going to go away. Okay. Now we're trying to solve for x. So in order to solve for x, I got to get x squared isolated. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4 to get rid of that 4 that's in the front, right? So I get x squared is equal to 4 divided by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And just how we did in the previous example, we're trying to get x by itself, right? So let's take the square root of both sides, square root, making sure you put the plus or minus. And then we have our answers. We have x is equal to plus or minus. The square root of 1 is still 1. So I have two answers here. This is negative 1, 0, and 1, 0. Now let's do the same thing for our y-intercept. And we're going to set x equal to 0. So 4 times, instead of x squared, we're going to put 0 squared, right? Plus y squared is equal to 4. So 0 squared is 0, and 4 times 0 is still 0, so all of this is going to go away, right? So you have y squared is equal to 4, and we're going to do that square root thing again. Here we go. Square root here, square root here, plus or minus. Always got to do plus or minus when you take the square root of both sides. So y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2. So we have two y-intercepts. We have, uh, no, this is a y-intercept. So I have to put the 2 in the y area, right? The x value is going to be 0. There you go. All right. And then we have these two. So we'll learn later on that this setup right here is a circle, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, I think you're okay with number three. I'm going to trust that you're able to do that one. I want to move to one that has a fraction in it real quick. So let's do this example here that has fractions in it. Just to show you that fractions aren't too scary, and this can be done with fractions. So y is equal to zero, right? So 0 is equal to 3x minus 2 over x squared plus 9. Okay, now in order to solve for x, when you have a fraction set up like this, you have to multiply everything by the LCD. We have to get rid of this fraction. We don't like it, so let's get rid of it. So what I would do is multiply the entire equation. I put the whole equation in um, brackets. I'm going to multiply, and that just tells me that I'm going to multiply both sides by the LCD. Your LCD is going to be x squared plus 9. That is your LCD. That's the only thing in your denominator. So when you multiply 0 times this LCD, 
zero times anything is still zero. <clears throat> when you multiply the right hand side by the LCD, the denominator basically cancels out and you're just left with the numerator. All right? Okay. So now the fraction's gone away and that has made this a little bit less scary. Now I can solve this. You add to, add to. So this is 2 is equal to 3x and then divide by 3, divide by 3. And so you get 2 thirds is equal to x. So our x, our x intercept is going to be 2 thirds y value is 0. That's your x intercept. Now let's do our y intercept. This is where we set our x equal to 0. So y is equal to 3 times 0 minus 2 over 0 squared plus 9. I just put 0 wherever I saw x. So at the top, we know 3 times 0, that's 0. So that's going to go away. At the top, I only have the negative 2. At the bottom, we have 0 squared, which is still 0, and I just have 9. So this is already solved for us. We have negative 2 over 9, and that's our answer. That can't be reduced, so that's going to be our answer. Negative 2 over 9.